Good morning, everyone. This is Leah Dixon from Port Coquitlam, British Columbia, and I am coming live this morning. Um, oh, there we go. I am live. I'm coming live this morning with a painted poppies card. So this is um, a bit of an older set. It's in our annual catalog on page 18. Um, and it was in our mini catalog last year, but it's still one of my favorites. As you can see here in the catalog, they've actually got it all done up in um, kind of like pastel colors. And um, it looks just really, really beautiful done in that manner. But today I am going to kind of stick to more traditional um, colors with our poppy parade and some black. And I'm going to throw in some white as well. So I'm just going to see if I can get... Um, a view here where I can see your comments. Oh, there we go. I can see them. Good morning, Janice. Wonderful. So um, we're going to try something a little bit new today. It's something I had never done, um, which is doing both um, heat embossing and dry embossing. So the Painted Poppies is a stamp set that comes with um, its own dies, which we're actually not going to use today. I do love them, but today we're going to do a lot of fussy cutting. Um, and then there's a second bundle that kind of coordinates with our Painted Poppies. And it's stuck to my desk right now. There we go. It is our Peaceful Moments um, stamp set and dies. So again, I'm not going to use the dies, although they are gorgeous. Um, it is the Peaceful Moments stamp set that I'm going to use. I'd say this is probably the stamp set I use the most, um, like ever. I use these sentiments for everything because I just love the font. And today we're actually going to use that thank you font, um, thank you sentiment from Peaceful Moments. So the first thing we're going to do is I have my four by five and a quarter piece of basic black cardstock cut, and we are going to stamp um, using Versamark. Our sentiment um, which is our thank you so I'm gonna grab my verse mark grab my sentiment and I'm gonna stamp it kind of to the lower left corner and put that on there and so you can't really see it right now because this is a clear ink but it's also an ink that doesn't dry quickly so it's perfect for embossing so I'm just gonna grab some embossing powder Anytime I emboss, I actually um, just use a piece of scrap paper underneath what I'm doing. So I'm just going to put this down and then I'm going to grab my white embossing powder. So I've got all my stuff on a tray. Um, just keeps it all in one place and easy for me to use. And then I tap off the excess. Okay. And then I can pour this extra stuff right back into my jar. That's why I like to use a piece of paper so that I can just easily get everything back into the jar and save it for another time. All right, and then I'll do one more little flick just to really get all the excess off of our paper. And now we're ready to heat emboss that. I always have to plug in my heat tool because I don't leave it plugged in. I'm just a little bit worried if it were to fall off the counter and accidentally turn on. So there we go. I've got it plugged in. And, oh, we're really out of focus. There we go. That's better. All right, and we're just going to heat emboss this. Excellent. So with that heat embossed, we are now going to dry emboss that piece. So I'm going to bring my stamp and cut and emboss machine into the picture here. And what I have here is our 3D um, scripty embossing folder. And I'm going to make sure that my words are going the right way. I'm going to line this up so that the last sentence just gets the, the loops cut off. 
There we go. Oh, actually, there we go. And with that done, I'm going to pop this in. My heat embossed piece is going right in here and to be dry embossed now. There we go. All right. And I can move that out of the way. And our final result is... Um, a piece of black cardstock that has some really beautiful script embossed onto it as well as our white thank you on there. So that is going to be basically the background for our card. So then I have a piece of Poppy Parade and this is cut at eight and a half by five and a half and scored at four and a quarter. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adhere this to our card front. Um, so you can use whatever you'd like, um, tear and tape, seal. I personally like to use liquid glue. And so I'm just going to do like a quick outline of that. And pop this down. There we go. So with that down on my card base, I am ready to start adding some poppies. So this set does come with dies. However, because I'm putting them on a black background, I actually didn't want like the little white border that may appear when you um, die cut them. I don't mind it when I'm putting them onto like um, a white background or something, but because this is on the black background, I really wanted it to stand out. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to stamp some pieces using our Memento ink, and then we're going to color them in using blends, and then we are going to actually fussy cut them, even this fancy little one. So with this little piece, I'm coming in here, inking them up, and I love this. This is probably my favorite stamp in the set. So delicate, so beautiful. You can see I was playing around with some other pieces. Um, so I've got one of those stamped. I'm going to stamp one of our poppies that goes that way. I'm going to stamp one of these larger poppies. I just have scraps here. I just pulled them out of my scraps bin and that's all I'm stamping on. Nothing fancy. And then a couple of these little leaves. Actually do three of these just in case. All right, so with all of our stamping done, then we can move on to our coloring. And I'm just using two colors of blends. Oh, good morning, Val. Good morning, Jacqueline. Yes, I know, Jacqueline. I absolutely adore this set. I've created cards in so many different colors, but with Remembrance Day coming up and I'm doing a lot of work at school with my students around Remembrance Day, um, I just thought it would be nice to make a card. And I know like one of our local um, tear homes has made a call out to have people with their classes or on their own send in cards and just kind of help plaster the walls of the care home with thanks and remembrance and love, especially during this year with COVID and people not able to see their families and all that, just to be able to send in some some love. I'm a part of a face group, Facebook group as well, um, Cards of Hope, I believe it's called. Uh, my friend Janine got me on there, and so just something to post there as well. So I'm just kind of coming in with my dark poppy parade, and... Um, Filling in some spots. I'm not fully coloring my poppies with my dark poppy parade. I'm going to come in and fill in the rest with my light poppy parade so that we get some depth to the flowers. All right. There we go. Oh, sorry, and I have one more to do. I almost put that away. All right. Down here. Yeah, there we 
there we go so we're done with our dark poppy parade we're going to come in and blend all of this with our light poppy grid now i'm going to use the smaller tip for this one because we've got some delicate spots to get into now because i'm going to be fussy cutting these i actually don't care too much if i go outside of the lines while i'm coloring um, i'd actually rather go outside of the lines and leave a little white spot um Oh, excellent. I haven't been on demonstrator planning place in a little while. I find I get a little overwhelmed by all the things on there. Um, I am so excited about OnStage, though. For those of you who are demos, I hope you'll be attending OnStage as well. And um, we'll get to see some new product and have a good time together. And those of you who aren't demos, this is just a very exciting time of year for Stampin' Up! Demos because we get sneak peeks of the new January to June mini catalog. We get some time to stamp together, recognize people's achievements, and um, play around with some of the new stamp sets. I actually just um, was playing the other day making swaps for on stage with the new Dragonfly set that's available to us. So pretty excited about that and excited to be able to share that with everybody soon. Good morning, Ruth. All right, so if you haven't missed much, I did some draw, or some sorry, some heat embossing here, Ruth, in white, and then I dry embossed my piece that I had heat embossed. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. It's hard for me to tell. There we go. I think you can see it there. So yeah, heat embossing and then dry embossing, and that's about it. Other than that, I've been stamping and coloring poppies. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of poppies here to color. And I am using um, Poppy Parade, of course. What else would you color a poppy with? All right, this one's a bit more. I'm gonna come in with a large layer of color and then I'll come back and blend it with my finer tip. Oh, there we go. Um, oh, swaps, no, not for the big group, Jacqueline, just for my, my team. Um, I organized a little six card swap. Um, lots of my members are kind of new or newish to the whole idea and none of them have ever been to an on stage. So I thought this would be a nice way for them to start getting into the idea of doing swaps a little less intimidating than, um, you know, doing a 30 card swap. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, um, I do know that there are some demos online who are running swaps. I don't know if it's too late to get in, being that it's just at the end of this week. Um, but even Stephanie Plesher was doing like a larger swap. I think hers was focused on diversity, probably right up your alley as well. She's actually done a call out for cards for Hanukkah and stuff, Jacqueline. Um, so maybe contact um, contact Steph about that one. All right, so there we have um, our poppies colored. Now I'm going to use Granny Apple Green and um, uh, the both the dark and the light to color our stems and leaves. And it's um, a bit of a bright choice, but on the black background, I just really felt like we needed some brightness. I, I do truly love Old Olive, but I just felt like it was just a little too dark for what we're doing here. So I'm gonna come in first of all with my green, my darker one. Not that it's that dark, but it is darker. And kind of do all the highlighty bits. Might even just do along the edges here. And like I said, I'm not too concerned if I go out of the lines um, because I am gonna be cutting this and I'd rather have a little bit of excess green than to have a little white border. Okay, so there we go. Now we're gonna come back in with our smaller one. Um, um, the bigger team, Angie's team, sometimes swaps, but honestly, Jacqueline, this year, with COVID and school and the stuff going on in her class, I don't know that um, that she's going to be doing one. I, I just think this year has become a little bit overwhelming. Um, for us teachers and the only reason I was able to do it is because my team is small because um, like let's be honest I had set October 31st as the deadline to mail them 
I made mine that morning, so thank goodness I only had six to make. Um, I had tried making them the night before on a call with a friend, but I just couldn't get my brain into it. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I'm just going to skip the swaps this year, or this on stage. Um, all right, so... Hopefully we'll do a big team um, new catalog swap, though. All right, just come in here and get that. Okay, so we're almost done this card. The next part is a little bit slow, and so I'll use some time while I'm doing this. Um, it's all this fussy cutting now. I do have the dies to cut them, but it leaves that white border that I didn't want. Um, so while I'm cutting this out, I would like to remind you guys as well that we have the curvy celebrations or quite curvy variety bundle that just became available to purchase today. And um, my friend Marika and I are putting on a curvy celebration stamp camp on November 22nd. Tomorrow is the last day to register for that stamp camp because tomorrow afternoon I'm actually going to be ordering all the supplies and everything I need to get that ready and mailed out to you guys um, so that you have it in your hands on 22nd for our stamp camp so if you haven't contacted me yet to register for that and you are interested um, then um, definitely contact me today would be best better than waiting till tomorrow um, contacting me today would be the best or going on to Facebook and registering through my event on there and um, I have four ways to join me at our quite curvy stamp camp um, one of them involves just what you need for the stamp camp one of them gets you some extras and one of them gets you everything and then if you're a demo and want to buy the whole set yourself um, I have an option for that as well um, so yeah, check that out and I'd love to have you there. We have a, quite a good little group already and Marika and I are going to be doing prizes and just, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, it'll all be on a private Facebook group and the presentations will be live throughout the day. We're also going to be doing two wow projects during the day with you guys and, um, yeah, just really looking forward to a full day of stamping on the 22nd. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about, um, if somebody else ran the swaps, Jack, that's something maybe you'd want to talk to Ange about. Um, I know it's certainly something that I'm, I can't take on. I've got too much going on as well. What with the classroom stuff. So, um, I do cherish my Tuesdays to have that one little day breather from the classroom. It's, it's a lot right now. Um, yeah, so. Um, and yeah, for those of you who are demos, um, check out all the fun GIFs and everything that they have um, for on stage as well. I just added a new Facebook frame on my personal page. I couldn't figure out how to do it on my group page. I'm going to have to keep playing. Um, but they've got some on stage frames for photos and on stage camera frames and all sorts of so that's going on. Um, I also I haven't sent out my newsletter yet. I'm hoping to do that today. Um, and one of the things that's coming up as well is in December, I'm going to be offering a, um, tag buffet card class. So that's that awesome, um, tag buffet card kit in the Christmas mini. And, um, we're going to be making some tags and of course some cards with the tags and a fun little box to put them all in. Um, so that's... Um, that's coming up as well. Yeah, so I've just got a few more here to fussy cut and then we'll start putting this whole project together. Um, and actually these are pretty easy to fussy cut, like they're very forgiving shapes and very flowy. Um, all right. <laughs> okay. So here we go. All right, just a little bit more. Um, I cannot believe today is going to be such a nice day to stay inside and stamp and get caught up on things like my newsletter because of the weather. Um, I was so thankful to have the nice weather yesterday. We did a bunch of outdoor stuff with my class. 
but um, wow, what a difference today. Total monsoon out there. Um, yeah, and apparently this is here to stay for a few days. So good time to start stamping. <laughs> okay, there we go, just about done. So one thing that I considered adding to this card, and it's one of my favorite pieces that came in the original um, suite with this, is the Whisper White Crinkled um, Seam Binding. And I thought about adding it, but it just was a little too much white on this card. But if you are planning to create with these poppies, it is a wonderful addition to most cards. All right. So now these ones are a little bit trickier to cut out. Um, my tip to you is to cut the one side and release it from the other poppy. But then when you're coming in here, do this leaf first. It's definitely easier to cut this leaf while you still have um, solid, sturdy pieces to hold on to. Because once you finish cutting that stem, everything becomes a little bit harder to hold on to. So do this leaf first. There we go. So I tried to get onto Minicam this morning so that I could actually talk to you guys face to face and I was not having any luck with technology. Technology in our house seems to be failing big time right now. Um, last night my son's phone wouldn't even turn on and we were like starting to look at new phones for him and when could we go and all of a sudden it just turned on again. No rhyme or reason to it, it was really bizarre. All right, so there we go. We've got that leaf cut out. Now we can come in and cut out the rest of this flower and the stem. So it is quite delicate, but that's okay because the way we're going to attach it will um, add some strength to it. All right. So I don't want to, oh, there we go. I was going to say, I don't want to just pull on that. I'll come back in and snip it, but it released itself. So now when I'm cutting this flower, I don't kind of turn it around and cut around it. I do all of my cuts inward towards the points where they meet. So it's just cut in, cut in, and let it drop. So my tabletop ends up with a whole bunch of little scraps. It's not like... You know, when you're a kid and trying to peel the orange in one full piece. Here we actually want to kind of cut always in towards those points and end up with all the scraps. It just allows for us to have a nicer um, finish. We don't get bends in our paper. And this last one's going to be a bit tricky. I almost need to be a lefty here. Try not to cut myself doing this. There we go. Okay, so we've got the one done. Now we have one last poppy to cut out, and this one's the most delicate of them all. Okay, there we go. And we're going to do that. I'm going to come in here and cut this poppy out first before we finish up with the stem. There we go. All right, and now we're going to cut all the way out. There. And again, this one's really thin, really delicate, um, but it's actually going to be okay because we are going to um, attach this underneath some other things to give it some more strength. So I'll just finish that curve. There we go. All right, so that is a ton of fussy cut pieces. Thanks for sticking around. Um, yes, those are Stampin' Up! snips. Um, I, uh, I got a whole bunch of pairs ages ago and then um, just recently I got a new pair and I love them. Um, I don't have a whole bunch because they wear out. In fact, they stay sharp for so long, it's really ridiculous. Um, I just have a whole bunch of pairs because people always wanna borrow my scissors because um, they're that good. <laughs> All right, so here we go. 
Now that we've got all of this done, the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to attach these two little poppies um, right in the background. But the only place that I'm going to actually put any adhesive is behind the poppy heads themselves. I'm going to let the stems flow down because we're going to actually kind of hold them down later with um, the other poppies that we're putting on here. So I'm just going to come in here and grab a mini glue dot for the back of that one. And I do want it up quite high. And then another mini glue dot for the back of this one. Now this mini glue dot I think is going to be too big, which is fine. We'll put it so it's on one edge. And then we'll just fold it over so that it's all behind that poppy. Okay. And then we'll come in here, pop that in. Okay, and you can see those stems are, um, oh, thank you. Oh, good morning, Danielle. Um, so those stems are just kind of flying loose and it's totally fine because we're gonna come in and put these poppies over top and you can see that just instantly holds it down. And that one little leaf, maybe we'll put a, maybe we'll put a mini glue dot behind there because that is sticking up a bit and I don't want it to get caught on anything. So you can see, I just grabbed that with my fingernail and actually rolled it off so that it's already kind of thinner and just gonna go behind that leaf nicely. And there we go. All right, so with that done, we can now start attaching our poppies. So our first poppy is going to go down flat and then our next um, so this one's going to go down flat and then our next one I'm going to pop up. So now I always kind of got to look at this and see how I want it. There we go. All right. And I want that to stay over there. So to put this one down, I'm actually going to use some glue. I don't know why. I just always prefer using glue. All right. And that's the way I want it. And I'm going to hold that in place, put it where I want it. There we go. So you can see I've just used that to hold it in place. Oh, good morning, Eileen. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. All right, now our next one is gonna go on like that and we're gonna pop it up with a dimensional. Just give a little bit of layering to this card. One in the middle will do. We wanna actually leave the edges a little free because we're gonna be tucking leaves underneath it. And so this is going to help. So then we're gonna come in here and I think glue dots again will be the best way to put these on. And we don't need a ton to hold this in place. So we're just gonna use one little glue dot and tuck that under and push down and then grab another one and tuck it under. And oh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna see if I can peel this up a bit, tuck it under both. There we go. Tuck that under, and then I'm not sure. I'd actually want that one up there, or maybe down here. Hmm. I think I'm gonna put it down at the bottom as well. So doubles, double down on the bottom. All right. So I'm just sliding that under my poppy there, because the glue hasn't dried yet. Another great reason for using liquid glue. And we've created like a little bed of leaves for our poppies. Um, so that is our finished card, um, unless we wanted to add some bling. I'm almost tempted to put some bling there, but I feel like maybe I should just, um, leave it a little bit more somber because it is a Remembrance Day card. And so we're going to skip the bling today. It's hard to do. Um... <laughs> So that is our card. So it is a lot of fussy cutting, but I think the effect of the flowers directly on the black background with no white um, bordering just really makes them pop and um, it cuts to this card. So I hope you have learned a few new little techniques and have a wonderful, wonderful day. I will see you next Tuesday with another Facebook Live. Thanks, Danielle. Bye, everyone.